let's talk about the research process for a moment. If you have not had time to read the pages I assigned in Little Seagull, those first research sections, R1 and R2, please do that now before you watch this presentation because they work together and I want you to know what um, the material in the book is laying out for you as well. So it's really important that you have a sound research process. And like I said, when I first introduced this assignment, I have figured out a method that seems to work well for the majority of students. So if you follow this process, it will make your experience writing a research paper, a documented essay, um, a little bit easier. So I want to give you my tips and my strategies and hopefully you will you will agree with me that this is a, a simple easy way to handle things. So we're going to talk about two things in this presentation and then after it's over I'm going to um, show you where to go to find good sources and talk a little bit more about uh, a working bibliography and, and what that is. So, to begin here, when you begin the research process, now, you've got to answer this specific question, which is, what do you need to know? You already know some things, right? But, but there's other information that you need to know to help make your argument richer, thicker, stronger. So, I always begin with asking students to do one of two things. Either write an outline before you begin your research, which is, which is what I've asked you guys to do, or often I'll ask students to write what I call a zero draft, meaning you write your paper without any source material at all, just straight from your head. The end result is the same, and since you guys have been familiar with writing outlines for me, creating essay plans, so to speak. I figured we'd just stay that course. So you should have um, gotten my feedback on your outlines and, and be ready to start the process of drafting. Now, as you look at those outlines, you should be able to recognize a couple of things. One is where you need to strengthen your argument. Now, you may have a paragraph that you feel very solid about, and you might not need anything more than a fact or a statistic, but you might have a paragraph that you just, you don't know much about. You think it's a good idea, you think your topic sentence is really good, but you just need more information. Well, that's where you go for your research. That's how you start the process. You have got the world at your fingertips, and the research process can become overwhelming if you don't specifically know what you are looking for. So it is important to figure out what you know so that then you can figure out what you need to know to improve your um, to improve your essay. And so there could be many different reasons that you find that you need to use source material. Maybe you want to directly support your topic sentence. Maybe you just need additional evidence, additional examples that you want to go out and find from another place. Um, you've run out of examples on your own, so you want to go find another example to support your, to your support that topic sentence. Maybe you need to provide some background information or some context. Okay, what's the situation? Um, do we need to know something about maybe a, 
a particular diagnosis or a particular um, any kind of background information that is is appropriate place to look for for to turn in source material. Do you need to explain a term or concept? Do you need a specific definition of something? That's a great place to look for background material, source material. Do you want to lend authority to your argument? Do you want to go find what some expert said? So in other words, you might say, I think this, and look, this really qualified person in the field also thinks it too. Do you need to find source information to help you in that part of the essay where you have to present the other side? when you have to give an alternative interpretation? Do you need to go out there and find someone who thinks differently from you? So these are all really, really good ways to strengthen your argument by using source material. It's also important to select sources that are worth your time. You do not have a whole lot of time to complete your research. You have a week. And so it's really important that you don't even engage with sources that are not credible. So I'm going to show you how to access a couple of databases within the Alabama Virtual Library. One is, an, is EBSCO. The other is a Gale search, and, and these are databases that will be very helpful for you in finding articles that you can use for your sources. <clears throat> Print sources <coughs> are fine as well, books, um, you know, you might have a textbook. Um, for example, that you want to use, or any other kind of printed book material. That's, that's certainly a credible source. <clears throat> and then you can also do general web-based searches. Um, in other words, you can do a Google search, but you must determine credibility in that Google search. So in doing a Google search, Try to find sources that end with a .org or a .net or a .gov. Those are typically going to be credible sources. Also, .com sources that, that are associated or have a print counterpart. So in other words, something like the WashingtonPost.com or the Atlantic.com. But I want you to stay away from what might be considered um, biased websites or people's blogs or Facebook posts or, or, or anything that has not been vetted. So if you stay with .orgs, .govs, and .coms that have a print counterpart, then you should be okay. If you suspect that a website isn't credible, you are probably right. And if you have a question about it, please send me the link to it and I'm happy to say thumbs up or thumbs down because it is important that you choose reputable sources. As you are finding sources, how I want you to keep track of your research is very specific. And I want you to do that in what is called a working bibliography. And I have um, examples of this um, linked as well, so you can see a one-page working bibliography. 
you will have one working bibliography per source. So if you look at seven sources, you're going to have seven working bibliographies. Now remember, you can only have a maximum of five sources, but you might find seven that you think you might use. Now, the reason that I use this working bibliography format is that I have found what happens with a lot of students is that they will print out a bunch of information and highlight it and really not know where they're going to use it in their paper. And so that it's really not helpful for them. They become overwhelmed by the research. Um, they end up sending themselves a bunch of links and then they go back and they look at those links and they don't know what in the heck it was they were trying to do with them. And it just creates more chaos than it, than it creates benefit. So when you organize your research into working bibliographies, you are doing a lot of work up front with your research which is simpler and easier in the long run. So let's say I have found a source that I think I want to use in my essay. Obviously, I'm going to read it. And then I'm going to write down the bibliographic information for the source on a page all by itself. So this is going to be author, title, um, web address, any of that information that is going to help you get back to that article. And when I show you how to find certain sources in the next video, how to use EBSCO for example, I'll show you real easy ways to get that bibliographic information. So you're going to write down that information at the very top of a piece of paper or type it however you want to do it. Then you're going to take notes on the source. You're going to read through the, the article or the chapter of the book or whatever and you're going to take notes on that source. And I'm very, I, it's very specific what I mean by taking notes on the source. I want you to write down any quotations or other information that you think you might want to include in your own essay. So maybe it's a direct quotation, maybe you paraphrase, maybe it's just a statistic, um, but actually physically write it down, okay? Because you're not just highlighting and you have to physically write something down, your brain is automatically going to go through a process that says, is this important? Is it important enough for me to write it down? And if it is, then chances are you might use it. You might actually use it in your paper. If your source has page numbers, then write the page number down beside it where that information came from. If it is a uh, a website without page numbers you can't write in you, you know there is no page number but if you have a paginated source write down the bar the information you might you think you're going to use and then the page number that that came from and then the last thing I want you to do is indicate in which body paragraphs you're going to use the source and explain how this source relates to your own ideas and what you're trying to prove. So in other words, it's not enough to take notes on that source, but you've got to tell yourself where you're, which paragraph you're potentially going to put that information in. And if you cannot tell yourself where you're going to put it, then you do not need to write it down. And then you need to be able to explain to yourself why you're going to do that. How does it relate? Is it support? Is it refutation? You know, explain to yourself why, why you're, you're going to use it. 
And if you cannot tell yourself where you're going to put it and why you're putting it there, then you don't need that information. So this is the reason that I advocate this process because it makes you decide early on what's going to be appropriate for you to use and what's not. And it makes you in control of the source material and not the source material in control of you. Because after all, this essay is your argument, your position. It is not somebody else's. You're just using the ideas of another to help strengthen your argument.